Okay, welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us today for the first industry leaders lecture series offered during the spring semester, supported by the College of Engineering at New York Tech, as well as IEEE Region 1 and IEEE uh, Comp Science chapter. And we are going to start uh, with a video from uh, Dr. Beheshti, the Dean of the College of Engineering. Just one moment. Good afternoon, everyone. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the first session of the Spring 2024 Industry Leader Talk Series hosted by uh, the New York Institute of Technology's College of Engineering and Computing Sciences. My name is Bavak Beheshti, Dean of the College. This series is co-hosted by our college, as well as the IEEE Region 1 and the IEEE Computer Society. Our audience today is composed of IEEE uh, professional members, as well as student members from across the United, North, Northeastern United States. In addition to the College of Engineering's current students, alumni, faculty, staff, and a number of distinguished guests. I would like to thank the College of Engineering's uh, Dean's Executive Advisory Board, particularly its chair, Dr. Robert DeFazio, who has been instrumental in organizing this series. Today's presentation is titled, The Company Benefits of Hiring a Co-op Student. The panel discussing this topic is moderated by Mr. Peter Goldsmith, the college's director of co-op. The panelists are Mr. James Flam, director of operations, uh, Designtronics Inc., uh, Mr. David Loft, VP of Application Development, Integration and Enterprise Architecture at Northwell Health, and Mr. Iman Hack, New York Institute of Technology's co-op student at 1-800-Flowers.com, uh, Inc. Without any further ado, I will pass it on to our speakers. Thank you, Dr. Beheshti, and I just want to edit a little bit of his video. Um, so David Luff was not able to join us today, but we thank Mary Goss, uh, who is stepping in for him from Northwell Health. So thank you, Mary. Um, and Peter, we'll turn the floor over to you and the panelists. Thanks, everybody. Enjoy. Thank you, Jill, and thank you, Dean Beheshti. So uh, I look forward. We have a really great panel. I am, again, Peter Goldsmith. I'm director of the co-op program for NYIT, also chairman of BlissNet, the Long Island Software and Technology Network. And Today's session is really to give you a little more understanding what a co-op program really is like. Uh, the co-op program at NYIT uh, is two years old this month, so it's relatively new. Uh, but uh, this semester, uh, you know, for this semester, we had over 70 students sign up for the co-op program, and we accepted uh, 15 of the top students. We're going through a pre-co-op class right now. Uh, as I said, we have some really great panelists, all who, who have uh, hired co-op students, and we have a co-op student who went through the program and uh, completed working at 1-800-Flowers. So the idea of a co-op program, different than an internship, co-op uh, student works full-time for about six months, gets paid, and does not attend classes. So instead of graduating in four years, they graduate in four and a half years, but they graduate with practical, real life experience at a company in their field, which makes them that much more valuable uh, to companies looking to hire, or in the case of 1-800-Flowers, uh, hire the co-op student because they get to see what the co-op student is all about. And the co-op student, of course, gets incredible uh, addition to their education. I want to read just a, a one little thing, there was an, an article today in Newsday about SUNY to use $10 million to fund 3,000 internships uh, across the SUNY campus. And it, the Chancellor, uh, uh, Chancellor uh, John King said in his statement, hands-on learning is crucial for a student's success and upward mobility. There's that real life experience that employers are frequently looking for when hiring recent college graduates. So that's, he's talking about internship, co-op is, it goes that one step more. And as I said, uh, in two years, the NYIT co-op program has really grown and uh, tremendous interest from the students for computer science, mechanical, electrical engineering, across all the, the facets, including Four plus one, which means students who are graduating in five years with their master's degree. So I'd like to uh, 
ask each of the panelists to talk about, again, I said the panelists have uh, hired co-op students, and I'd like each of the panelists to talk about, first of all, what their company does, and a little bit about the experience they had uh, with the co-op student. So the first one is uh, James Flam, who is Director of Operations at Designatronics, and he's already uh, hired two of our co-op uh, students. One is working right now. James, please. Yeah, we actually we have two working right now because we actually kept the first one on uh, part time, <laughs> believe it or not. So, uh, yeah, I mean, having having the students come in um, is amazing. You know, we design and manufacture small mechanical components, um, gears, pulleys, stuff along the lines of that. Uh, so having engineering students come in with some practical knowledge already on the uh, the subject helps us uh, teach them, you know, specifically gear design, which is, is hard to come across um, anywhere, really. All right, thank you, James. And Mary Goss, uh, who, again, thank you for stepping in for David, and who, now Northwell Health has hired four of our co-op students, and I believe you have two of them working right now for you. So. Mary, tell us your experience. Thank you. Sorry, trying to get myself on mute. Well, thank you. And I, David apologizes for not being able to be here, but I'm happy to step in for him. Um, so I work under David and we hired two co-op students this year. Um, I've hired co-op students in the past from Ireland and the experience was really positive. Um, we did a blog with the Ireland students and we really had a great time having them learn um, from our organization. I've also hired many interns and over the my years here at Northwell, I've been here about 17 years. Um, I will tell I will tell you that the feedback that I have from the people that have worked under us in these type of programs has been very positive. They love the real time experience. It gives them the opportunity to understand where they want to go um, once they get into IT. They learn from you know our our co op students will be part of projects. They will help. Um, put the business analyst side of it together. They will go to meetings, they will actually build, um, and they will hopefully get a chance to deploy because they're there for a long enough time. So it's really um, valuable to us and we're so happy to have them. We had two start yesterday. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for, for doing that and working with us. And Paul Trapani, who is uh, president of ListNet, but also runs a company called PassTech, and he hired one of our co-op students the, from the first group. And uh, Paul? Um, yeah, so thank you, Peter. Uh, so I am the um, current president of ListNet, Long Island Software Technology Network. Uh, Peter told you a little bit about it, but we exist as a chamber of commerce and trade organization for the tech industry here on Long Island. I was lucky enough to be part of the first group of co-ops and hired uh, a young woman, Cheyenne, who was fantastic and helped me both with ListNet and my company, PassTech Development. Uh, PassTech Development does custom software development. We also have an application that is used for um, organizations that do workforce development. And um, working with a co-op student was fantastic because she was able to help do a lot of things. Um, I've done interns bef internships before, and in three months, it's hard to get someone um, going on projects, you can only give them small tasks. And usually you find by the end of the three months, uh, they're ready to move on to something. But with a, a six month co-op, you have a chance to really get them involved in things, longer term things, uh, have them actually complete projects and see them through to the end. So it was a fantastic experience. Thank you, Paul. Now I'm in you were the student who actually went through the co-op program and worked at 1-800-Flowers and uh, Talk about a little bit about your experience, and I think you were with the second group of uh, that we had here at, uh, with the co-ops uh, in the co-op program. Hello, everyone. My name is Ayman Hogg. For those of you that don't know me, that don't know me, I was the co-op student for, for the last cohort here at NYIT, and I've just completed my six-month internship uh, last December at One Hundred Flowers, and my title there was junior software engineer. And uh, I actually got a return offer from them uh, right after my co-op ended and I'm working for them right now. Uh, as far as my experience with the co-op uh, and being a co-op student, 
I'm personally a huge advocate for the entire idea of a co-op, especially for engineering. And I say this because my experience with applying for jobs in, in this field in general is that there's this like chicken and egg game that's being played between employers and applicants where employers, you know, they want, even for entry level positions, they want people with some experience, but then you have those people with no experience that are trying to get those entry level jobs. So I feel like the, the just the idea of the co-op kind of solves this entire dilemma that me and I feel like tons of other people are having. Um, and then as far as my experience with the actual um, company, 100 Flowers, I could not be happier with how everything went. Uh, it was definitely a bit, int a bit intimidating at first. I had seven or I think eight interviews in total, but they all went well. Um, uh, as far as my position, it started in June of 2023. I was the second I got into the office, I was welcomed by HR. Everybody was so incredibly friendly. And I remember still, I, when I first came in, uh, they gave me a quick tour of everything. They gave me uh, a little um, orientation and then they walked me to my desk where I was welcomed with this nice gift basket. And for those of you that are not familiar with 100 Flowers, they're like a e-commerce company uh, and they're a parent company of a, a bunch of other like gifting services. So inside the basket was just a bunch of chocolates and, and things like that. And they were personalized towards me. My name was on a, a bunch of them. Uh, I had my own desk, my own cubicle. My name was on it. And I, I know all of this is like pretty standard for a corporate job, but this was my first corporate job. So like I, I couldn't really appreciate any, all of this like anymore. Um, and uh, as far as like what I did, I was a part of the checkout team, which essentially means uh, when you pick all of your items that you want on our website and you check out, you want to buy it, that entire ending process, I was a part of that team. They, they were in charge of all of that. I, a few improvements I, I think uh, that could be made with the program. I, I liked how there was that prerequisite um, class that students had to take prior to the actual recruitment of the co-op company. Uh, you know, they went through the resume, they went through my CV and everything. Uh, I think this is a very, very good idea, especially because a lot of the students that are applying to co-ops, they don't necessarily have the experience. So this this um, this class kind of solves a lot of that. I think adding on to this would be nice. And then as far as uh, spreading the word to other companies and students, when I first got um, learned about the co-op, it was strictly through like word of mouth. One of my advisors recommended it to me and that's how I found out about it. I think uh, just marketing, Marketing this more to students and other companies, I think that would sh um, show a lot of other people the, the benefits that you can get from joining this. I mean, that's perfect. I think you can just tell from the way he's talking and the excitement, uh, the value that he got, <laughs> plus getting a job. And not only did uh, who went in her flowers, but the CIO, the chief information officer, has become an adjunct professor now at NYIT. So we also gained an adjunct. Um, and uh, he he's uh, you know very excited about that. So uh, so I'm going to go you know again. You, all of you have uh, worked with co-ops. So what what do you think? You know you heard Iman talking about his experience and what he did. And I know none, the fact that it's one eight hundred flowers. He gave a basket of chocolates, and uh, that's you know something that that really is nice. But but what was your experience? How did what did you do with the students? How did you find uh, when you first brought them on, did you find, you know, after a couple of months that they could take on more? You know, what was your experience with the uh, with the co-op student? James? Yeah, so um, basically it, it took takes a few weeks, right? You never jump right into it and assume that they know everything you're going to give them. So w the way I start, I have a few uh, tasks that I'll, I'll write down and see what where they are at um, skill and knowledge wise and then kind of get their feedback because it's not just about what I need, it's what they need as well. And then I try to find something that fits what you know the company and the student both need to get the most out of the co-op. No, that's, that's perfect. And uh, Paul, what about you? I usually start with um, some training, both online training, and then I do some training on certain things. And then same thing, I'll test them out with a few projects, see how they do. And then I always like to uh, give them something challenging that I know is not easy to do and kind of see how they handle it because 
what happens in school is they get assignments that are solvable in a day or that there's a Google answer that they could search for. So I like to give them something that they're going to have to um, use their brain for that there's not a quick and easy answer for and see how they deal with it and then use that as a learning experience to show them this is what working in the real world is like. It's not uh, here's an answer from a textbook and I could find this answer in 10 minutes and then just promote the answer. It's this is a problem. There's no <laughs> there's no known way to solve this. What are you going to do? And sometimes it's something I don't even have the solution to, but I, I do like to um, give them a challenge. So, you know, Peter hands it off to Paul. We're going to hand it off to Mary, Peter, Paul, and Mary for the uh, older people who are watching. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so um, so I do similar um, to what Paul, a combination of Paul and James do. We, we do um, training, mandatory training that Northwell Health System uh, requires. And then we spend some time having them go through some of the things like our internet that our team has worked on. And then I like to have each team member spend time with them um, so they can see what different team members do and what different team members' strengths are. And usually we can tell where their interest lies. And then to Paul's point, we try to put them on a, a long-term project. Um, that's a little challenging because um, we want them to come out with learning. We also bring them to a lot of meetings. We like them to meet um, other people and see what other departments are doing just outside of IT. So um, we really do try to make sure that um, they get a well-rounded experience. Thank you, Mary. So I'm in, you, you mentioned, you know, some of the things that could be improved. Do you see, especially as a student, having gone through the co-op, uh, what other improvements you could, uh, that you could think of that we could make this program again, I, like I said, it's only two years old at, at NYIT, how we could improve it even more? Yeah, so I, like I mentioned before, I, I really, really loved the whole idea of the class before the co-op, just to get the students prepared for everything. Uh, definitely adding on to that whole experience would be nice. Um, but other other than that, I I know of co-ops like at maybe Stony Brook and um, Northeastern, they, they have really big co-op programs. And from what I, my, my friends that were there, they are affiliated with other sort of recruitment agencies that kind of help in the process. I don't know if that's something NYAT can do where you guys are interested in, but mm -hmm. that may be kind of replicating that whole system they have and try and see if that fits in our like ecosystem. I don't know if that would work, but I think that's definitely something that we can add. Um, I, we, we actually had a call, I think you and me, um, Mr. Golson, we had a call a few months ago and I brought this company up to you. It was called Inroads um, and they kind of do what you do, what this co-op does in terms of um, facilitating that whole process of um, matching up students with companies and they, they work with schools. So I, I don't know if that's maybe something you would be interested in, but I, th I think that was cool. No, that definitely is a good idea. And, uh, you know, again, I, I'll bring it up now, James, do you, you know, you now have had, you said now two students working for you and you um, at this point, is there something that we could do was how was the process? You know, when when I sent you the resumes and the interview, how did that go? Is there anything we can improve on? The process, I mean, so far it, it has been good. Um, the only thing I could think of is maybe if you had a larger selection. Uh, I know you said you know you had a, a big group and you narrowed it down to, I think fifteen. You said um, maybe having all of that available. Um, and then kind of like a, a job selection process, you get these resumes, you go through and you find what best fits the company. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what I do. I try to handpick and send resumes so that, you know, if I send everyone the same resume, then let's say Mary hires that person and you go, yeah, I really wanted that, you know, so I'm trying to handpick, uh, but you know, definitely something to think about. As I said, we're, we're trying to improve Dean Beheshti uh, this is something, a program that he brought because his daughter went through it when she went to Northeastern. And, uh, it's you know, we're, we're going to keep trying to improve it. So uh, definitely that's a good idea. Mary, do you see anything that we could? Uh... Well, I have a comment on what Jean said. Um, I, I actually liked the fact that we got very good resumes. Um, and honestly, we probably could have taken any one of those resumes. Um, it was a very difficult decision. Northwell is a very large organization. We have 85,000 employees. We have 3,500 in IT. We have multiple hospitals, you know, 20-something hospitals. 
um, 14,000 pro providers. Um, so we, we do hire often and we get lots of resumes that come in and sometimes you're spending so much time sifting through resumes. I thought the resumes that you sent, Peter, were um, right on and the people that I had doing the interview um, for me are the toughest interviewers in my team. Um, so for them to come back and be um, c conflicted on which ones to go with was a good uh, problem for us in an organization where you don't really have the time to be going through them yourself. Yeah, that's that's how I felt. You know, if you there's a, a system called Handshake, and if you just say go to the Handshake, and you, my idea is, you know, I sift through, and if I think it's a a resume that could fit Designatronics, you know, I send that to you, and if you say no, then I send you another one. If you say yes, and then you interview. So that's what about you, Paul? Because you've been involved with a lot of different things through ListNet. Is there some? Well, I would idea? say. A, a the, the process was fantastic, of course, and you do a great job of, you know, selecting and finding good candidates for people. I would say a little bit more on the alignment with the classes student take and then what the co-op companies are looking for. And the big one that I always bring up is a database class. And if students that go into the co-op program, at least on a computer science point of view, could have it that they take a database before a database class before going into the co-op for most of software development, I think that would be a good thing. But I'm saying that from a selfish point of view, I would say get what some of the other companies are looking for and then maybe have, you know, I, I know it's hard to do because you don't know what students are gonna go into the co-op, but maybe that could be like a recommendation that if you wanna do a computer science co-op or something like that, we would tell you to do your database class before you do the co-op. So, you know, when we started, as I said, February, you know, two years ago, so it was in 2022, you know, it was in the mid semester and we had to rush out and we got four students to sign up. You know, no one knew what a co-op was and we, you know, we went out and really, uh, and, and from that, you know, we started building a, a company base. You know, it's a lot of connections that I have through ListNet and we started building up, and now more and more uh, companies are uh, contacting us at NYIT, saying we want to get involved in in the uh, in the co-op program. But maybe if I'm looking to you. Is there any recommendations how we can get the word out? You know, with a you know a lot of uh, companies, when you say co-op, they say you know when I live in a condo, you know what's a co-op, <laughs> and you know getting getting that across. That valuable experience, not only for the student but for the company, um, the way you expressed it. So, Mary, what do you do? You think there's a way I I can get the words out to more companies? Yeah, I do think there's a way. You know, I'm sure there's multiple ways we can do that. Um, I do think one of the a good ideas would be for the co to to I'm sure over the course of time you'll be increasing the amount of co-op students that you have and getting those co-op students to come back from the companies and have, I don't know if you do this today, and have their own like blog or their own uh, event so that they can talk about their like almost cross train with their learning at the different organizations. We do that our, you know, when we have interns and stuff, they all usually become friends at Northwell, especially when we were more less remote and, um, and, and they would, you know, be able to get that information from each other. But um, I think just through connections like ListNet and stuff like that, you'd be able to get the word out there. Um, I think it's a really valuable program. Um, I, I was happy to take on co-op students. Well, thank you, thank you. Uh, so, uh, you know, that's what you know. As I said, we're trying to get more, you know, more companies involved, uh, and we have built up, the, you know, the base. We now have a lot more companies. Uh, now, you have to realize NYIT has two campuses. You know, one, of course, on Long Island and Old Westbury, and one in the city. Uh, right next next to Lincoln Tower. So we have students, you know, some, so what happens in many cases, a student, let's say, lives in New Jersey and goes to the uh, New York City campus, doesn't want to come and get a job out on Long Island, doesn't have the car, doesn't want to travel. And the same, a student from Long Island might not want to go into the city. So that's part of what Iman was talking about. I talk with each student individually saying, do you want to work for a big company or a smaller company? You know, are you willing to go out all the east or do you only want to work in the city or you only want, you know, where do you live? Do you have a car? It's part of that process 
where we have that pre-course, uh, you know, getting to know the student a little more and uh, uh, make, so I can do the, the right match. Because let's say, James, you know, I gave you a, a resume and you try and the students, well, wait a second, you know, you're in Hicksville. You know, I live in New Jersey. I'm, I, you know, and you said, wait, I, I really want you to work here, but it's got, you know, and then, uh, uh, you know, we have that kind of a, a program, you know, that kind of a problem. I mean, so, you know, I mean, you mentioned, uh, you know, getting the word out more uh, for the students. And that's part of what we've been doing. Rad, who works with me, uh, you know, he has been going around to all the classes and talking about the co-op. As I said, two years ago, no one knew about it, the students. We finally got four students uh, to sign up. But now, you know, we have too many, you know, so many students signing up. Uh, I want to make sure that every student who we take in gets a job. And so far, every student who has gone through the co-op job uh, program has gotten a job. Um, and, uh, you know, some have got, had to go through two or three different interviews with different companies. But you want them, you know, to, to have it as a good experience. I mean, do you can you think of any other ways that we could uh, get the word out to all of you students? Yeah, um, uh, like like I mentioned before, I think advertising would be a good way. I, I know that they, we have people going to classrooms and explaining what the whole program is. Uh, I, I like that idea. Maybe um, posting it on Instagram. I know New York Tech has been making an initiative to get more reach with students via social media. I've been seeing a lot of Instagram posts about our other clubs. Maybe if we can do something like that for the co-op program, because nowadays students are all connected with stuff like Instagram. We use, I know we use Handshake a lot. So I think that would be a good idea. And also like how you mentioned before, Mr. Will Smith, the, uh, the name, the co-op, people, people don't even know what it is a, a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe maybe if we it's just an idea, instead of saying co-op, we can say like co-op internship. That that'll give I guess more context to what it actually is, and that could be more enticing to students and also employers. Uh, that's just an idea though, um, because it's, it's 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 difficult to kind of explain what a co-op is without like losing someone's interest. You, you want you want to be able to do it concisely and efficiently. So I think co-op internship, if we market it that way, that, that that could maybe be effective. That's a very good idea, Hyman. You know, um, you know, one of the things uh, when I when we talk to the students, and sometimes the parents don't realize, and I just say, make sure you your parents are, you know realize that you're going to be graduating in four and a half years instead of four years, or in the case if you're going for your masters, the four plus one program in five and a half years. And I've had cases where someone got a position and then went to the parents and parents said, whoa, you know, four and a half, I didn't, you know, realize that. Now, again, all the financial aid, they don't pay while they, you know, uh, while they, they're taking the co-op position, they get paid. Uh, so all of us have gone to college. Uh, what is your feeling if either if you have a child or if, if you had to go through it about the four and a half years? Uh, you know, versus just going through four years and graduating and then getting a job. Mary? Yeah, well, fortunately, I have a lot of experience with that because all three of my kids went to college and all three of them, uh, two of them did internships. One of them, they all played sports, so it was very difficult to do internships, but they all got, one had to do an internship during a summer and, um, they all got jobs from their internships, their first jobs out of college by doing them. And uh, and my son-in-law actually went five years doing a, a co-op program and got a job from that co-op program. So I, I think it's, it really is beneficial. It gives you almost a leg up on the, the next student coming out with no experience. Um, and you make a lot of connections. And if you don't get a, ex, ex, at Norco, we have so many professional uh, information services folks with a very talented, that came from a whole across industries that have lots of connections. And sometimes if they, we don't have a position available, we always reach out to our partners and people that we know if we find someone good that we think is um, worth, uh, you know, going out there for, so. Um, okay, you know, I tell the students, you know, Iman was very 
uh, fortunate and probably very good. That's the reason got an offer from the company. But I feel even if you don't get an offer from that company, when you're interviewing and you, you know, someone who graduates or graduate and you see someone who worked in the co-op for six months. Let me ask you, James, well, how do you feel if you saw two resumes, both were excellent resumes, but one worked at another company as a co-op? Would that influence you anyway? Experience is experience. Um, having any is better than having none. And, you know, I went through the same thing. I had an internship when I was in college, and that's how I landed my first job. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I back that 100%. Well, that's, as I mentioned, when I read the article, the chancellor said experience, job experience is vital. And, uh, you know, internships usually are, you know, sometimes the most seven, eight weeks in the summer. Uh, as Paul said, you you know you don't you can't really put someone on a, on a project, but doing something full time, getting paid for it, and uh, uh, to me is is invaluable. I think you know we have about ten minutes left. I don't know how what Jill said. I would like to open it up to any questions that someone uh, you know from the audience might have, or from the Zoom audience anyway, and we'd we'll be glad to to try to answer. Are there any questions? Okay. Uh, Peter, I just want to make a comment, if I can, also for, uh, for NYIT. I think, in, I think in order for the program to really grow, uh, the school has to consider that the students know up front, you know, eventually that they're applying and they're going to apply for a four and a half year program, um, because I think that's part of the challenge for parents is the planning and, you know, uh, making it happen and for students as well, uh, especially with their classes. So I think eventually if it could be incorporated into um, a plan of study with a major that the co-op is built into it, it'll make it easier for students and make it easier for parents because parents, I think, would get nervous to say, OK, four and a half years. But what if you can't take your, the classes you need in that last semester? Now the student has a problem and I might have to, you know, Deal with something else. So that's that's just my input from what I've seen and from me talking to students. Well, at NYIT, when we have open school day, when new prospective students and their parents come to hear the chairmen of the department talk, uh, they've asked me to get up and uh, talk about the co-op. And how many parents come up to me afterwards and you know asking questions and stuff? But we have two. What is the best platform to find co-op opportunities? Again, each school does it differently. You know, NYIT, it's, you know, working through me um, and, uh, you know, emailing me, you know, uh, uh, just, you know, pgold01, but I'll, I'll put my email on and just saying that your company is interested in a, in a co-op and then we could talk more. Uh, that's, you know, it's a very simple way of, of doing it. Uh, we, we try to do really work one-on-one, -on -one, both with the companies and with the students. I would like to know if IEEE student membership can help students make the most of their co-op experience, perhaps share stories in a podcast or event or conference. You know, absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, IEEE actually, you know, uh, ListNet runs a, a co-working space in Plainview called the Digital Ballpark, and IEEE has an, an office there and is working with us. So we definitely we will talk more about it. Um, the uh, the head of IEEE on, on Long Island um, from Zebra, uh, we just you know she just came to one of our events. So that's a very good idea. Definitely working. You know IEEE is such a great organization. It's been around for so long and it's it has so many valuable uh, uh, members. I have work experience not related to my major. Should I include this in my resume? Absolutely. Uh, you know, but again, it has to be something, you know, is it good that you worked in a day camp? It shows that you worked one summer, but it has to be some, you know, something related to an industry. You know, people just think if you were hiring someone and you looked at a, at a resume and all the purpose, you know, I, I worked at uh, McDonald's and I worked at, it shows definitely, you know, you know that you, you worked for the summer instead of taking it off and that's, you have a good work ethics, but you're working, the more you put on your resume, I always tell every student, when you graduate with 
with your major, almost every student who graduates with that major has taken the same courses. So the more you distinguish yourself and the more you show, especially in, in that industry, uh, your work-related experience or working on projects, you know, you built your own computer, you've learned a, 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 a computer language, you know, you work for another company, you're doing something mechanical. You know, right away, James knows that you know, you've got s some real practical experience. Anything that can distinguish you from anyone else makes you that much more valuable. Um, so again, you know, uh, I think we have, a, you know, a couple more minutes. So I'd like for each, I'm going to go around to each person on the panel to talk a little bit more, just finalize your experience, you know, uh, you know, ha having a co-op student working with NYIT in the co-op program. Uh, you know, first of all, I thank you all for supporting the co-op program. You've been there from the beginning and, uh, you know, how we can make it better. Uh, James? Yeah, um, it, it's been a great experience so far. Um, all this, the, the two students, I should say, that I've dealt with were both, you know, the, they had the knowledge that they needed to get the job done. Um, and they definitely picked up a few skills along the way to help, you know, get through some projects. And I can't wait to see what else comes through, uh, how, how many other co-op students we can get, um, you know, to, to help us along. I have a resume you'll be getting in a week or so. Uh, I have someone in mind already, a perfect student. You know, one student says, I worked in electrical construction, but he's a computer science major. Absolutely. You know, you just think computer science, every company. I mean, you know, Mary works at a hospital. You know, some, when, sometimes I tell people, a huge computer science department, law firms, everyone. So you never know what's going to stand out to, to a, a prospective employer. Uh, so the more you can put on that kind of experience is is is, is valuable. Yes, it is. Uh, the co-op program is available to international students, but just realize, and I tell that uh, to the co-op, you know, to the international student, while during the co-op, uh, uh, while you're working as a co-op student, the company will not sponsor you. For citizenship realize you know now if they hire you full-time afterwards that's possible some companies will do it some companies won't but if you think you're going to get into a cobra program and then uh have the company sponsor you you know it costs a lot of money it's a lot of time and this is a and they're only going to be working for six months so the experience you're going to get as an international student will be incredible if the company hires you full-time it's very possible. Some companies do sponsor, some companies don't. So that's something to, to think about. So, Paul, the same thing. I, I know you, you're you involved in so many different ways. Is there any uh So I improvement? would say what, one, one of the, well, improvement, um, yeah, I think ultimately it has to be scaled up. And, you know, um, the way you're doing it is fantastic. And, um, you know, making that direct connection with companies versus companies just looking at a, huge database of resumes is, is, is a great thing. I think one of the things for companies to realize also is the benefit of hearing from students, you know, what their point of view on things are. They're, they're the future of the industry. So you, you take it for granted sometimes, but you start to see like, for example, hey, well, myself and none of my peers really use Facebook anymore. So consider alternate forms of marketing. And, and that's, that's, I think, a thing that could be put out there to companies as well. Aside from the benefit of a talent pipeline, it's a pipeline to what the next generation or what the upcoming generation uh, believes, what their skills are, uh, and their viewpoints on things. And I, and I think that's a tremendous benefit. And I think that's very important, especially in the tech industry, which is always changing. Thank you, Paul. So as you said, you know, without the companies, you know, the students won't have jobs. But without the students, you know, that's... Those are the ones that we, we we're trying to get involved. So I'm in, I'm going to you know leave it off. I think we're just about ending. You know, talk about you again. You you expressed yourself so eloquently uh, about the the program. But what are do you have any final statement you'd like to make? Uh, yeah, sure. Closing remarks. Um, I'm not sure exactly who is uh, listening. If there are any uh, prospective co-op students or people that are thinking about it. Uh, again, like I wholeheartedly think this is an excellent opportunity, especially for those in engineering. Um, I, I, I would like to say that uh, e 
you know, this is definitely a lucrative experience. I, I don't think anyone should be going in, into this for the money financially. This is an internship strictly for experience. You want to get your foot in the door. You want to make connections. You want to get that inter industry experience that employers like so, so badly want. So, and uh, as far as the whole graduation delay, uh, I, I know everyone has their own circumstance. It might not fit for everybody. For me, it did. Uh, my parents, uh, very conservative. They hated the idea of me postponing my graduation for six, for four to six months for uh, for an opportunity that they weren't really familiar with. It definitely took some convincing on both ends to, to get there. I had to educate them on what exactly a co-op is, the benefits of it. Um, but yeah, I, I recommend it. Uh, anyone, if you have any questions about my experience or if you want any help with it, I'll, I'll be happy to answer questions. Or if you want to just message me, uh, you can let me know. I mean, you were a perfect representative of uh, the students, uh, everything Thank that you. you expressed. And the last question right now, uh, the graduate students are not part of the program. It hasn't been approved yet. Only students going for the four plus one, which means you go uh, five years and you graduate with your master's. So at this point, graduate students have not been approved. It's only for undergraduates and four plus one. So again, I want to thank all of the panelists. Uh, I got some great ideas from all of you. I thank you for being part of the co-op program and uh, hiring the NYIT students and uh, you know expressing how pleased you are with them. And uh, we're going to keep improving the program. Uh, as I said, it's uh, two years and you know we're going to keep making it better. Dean Beheshti sees this as something, as does the uh, president of NYIT, as, as a real valuable part of the students' uh, college experience. And uh, we're going to keep, keep this program going and growing. So again, I thank all of you who were part of it. I think, Jill, I, I think is that it's now uh, 1.30 or should, do you want me to keep going? Um, I'm just going to play, thank you again. I'm just going to play a quick uh, video from Dr. Beheshi to close things off. So just one moment, please. Thank you, our panelists, for the great presentation. Thank you all for participating in this event. My thanks go to the colleagues who made this event happen, Dr. Robert DeFazio, Assistant Dean Jane Polizzi, and the College of Engineering staff, Ms. Uh, Jill Rogers. Please tune in for the next talk as it will be advertised through the same channels you learned about this talk. Have a great afternoon. Thank you. And thanks again to everyone who participated as a panelist or who were listening in. Jill, thank you for all getting it started and getting it going. And uh, I think it was a great experience. I said co-op to me uh, is just invaluable to students and to companies. And uh, MYIT is going to keep growing the program under Dean Beheshti. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, especially Thank the you. panelists. Yes, have a great day. Thank you. Take care. Bye.